。嘉威这一次在两届这个展览里面的作品，可以说是全球当代艺术跟区域传统工艺的一个相遇。一边是奠基在艺术论述、全球移动，还有文化体制的全球当代艺术体制；另一边则是面临同样的全球化，但是却是濒临灭绝的传统工艺。这些织布作品是嘉威所制造的合作，他们最终把工艺跟劳动的传统智慧编织进入了当代艺术的语境之中。如果我们回溯东西方艺术的交汇，相较于战后艺术家对日本禅学的兴趣，嘉威的艺术可以说是把书法艺术、空灵艺术、生活艺术给同一了。他的作品在时间中进行，以一种活生生的生命形式。这种方法帮助我们贯穿了世界，还有生命的整体。In the last few years, I took many trips for various reasons to Indonesia, Japan, and Mongolia. At first, I didn't know how to make connections between these three very different cultures and geographic locations. Later, I found a map that traces how the tantric Buddhist tradition, which I have been following for almost two decades, has spread across Asia. I noticed that its teachings, collected by masters of Nalanda University in India in the fifth century, had reached furthest south to Java, Indonesia; furthest east to Mount Koya in Japan; and furthest north to Mongolia. After this realization, I started doing pilgrimages in these areas. It is a method for me to connect with the lineage of contemplative traditions in the East to contemporary art practice. In today's world, as we become increasingly overwhelmed by digital technology and information, clarity and awareness of the inner workings of our mind becomes especially pertinent. For example, what constitutes our mind and the concept of self, and how does it relate to the outer world and our environment? The womb and the diamond exhibition includes many works that were inspired by these reflections, journeys, and the people who I've met along the way. The centerpiece of the exhibition is an installation made of thousands of mirrors, pieces of glass, and a diamond. I was inspired by a pair of mandalas that I saw on Mount Koya in Japan, called the Womb Realm and the Diamond Realm mandalas. I had the honor to work with a Buddhist teacher and filmmaker from Bhutan on creating the glass womb for this piece. After reciting a mantra, his breath created the form of a mother's womb in glass. This womb represents an all-encompassing space. On the opposite side of the mandala is a diamond, which represents an indestructible force. Both describe the nature of our mind. So mandala is very grand. It's really, it's vast. It's deep. It's really. Infinite. Actually, the fundamental cause of all our pain, our suffering, our dissatisfaction, is trying to make, trying to make an order out of chaos. Balancing these two. Actually, going beyond chaos and order is what we want. So the word mandala has this connotation of. Uh, the rim, the parameter, and the center, but together, in our dualistic mind, we have we have this idea that oh, the middle has to be in the middle. But the mandala is not really like that. There's no middle. There's no parameter. There's no edge. It's just you know, it's one. Over two summers, I traveled in Mongolia from Gobi Desert in the south to the north towards Siberia. I asked the mother of a dear Mongolian friend, who is a craftswoman, to sew two traditional felt mats. One is embroidered with the mandala Kalkala Chakra, which means Wheel of Time. 
It depicts the interdependent relationship between an atom and the universe. One is embroidered with a symbolic diagram connecting great bliss with our body, speech, and mind. The diagrams are visual supports for meditation. The remote island of Zumba, Indonesia, is known for its war bikat, a traditional tie dyeing and weaving technique. An Indonesian curator, Alia Swastika, introduced me to a young weaver named Nancy. Her traditional methods use hand spun yarn, locally sourced cotton, and plant based dye. Together, we conceived a textile piece like a mandala surrounded with lobsters, which symbolize rebirth, since lobsters can regrow the limbs they lose. The courtyard is filled with trees where I inscribed the Har Sutra, a text on the Buddha's view of impermanence. The word impermanence makes us think of decay, but impermanence also means growth and change. The Har Sutra that I wrote grows and changes with the natural cycle of the trees. Cinnabar malachite azurite. Since the 5th century, these minerals have been used in cave paintings in Central Asia and along the Silk Road. It's the same route that the Har Sutra traveled from India and reached all the way to East Asia. This series of drawings was made as an homage to the five Dakinis, energetic beings in female form. As Zonsar Rinpoche, who is a lineage holder of the thousand-year-old tantric tradition, describes, Dakini represents the feminine energy in Buddhism. It is a raw, naked cognizance, like a baby, unaltered, uncontrived, unfabricated, and uneducated. The pigments on paper reflect the cosmos-like stardusts where the Dakinis are dancing. I conceived a video for the Green Island Human Rights Art Festival at a former political prison. I write the numbers from 1 to 9 on ice cubes and let them melt away. A reflection on how our value system gets reduced to numbers under authoritarian and capitalist regimes. Enlightenment of Revolution, Hilma of Clean, 还有高野山的曼陀罗。书籍编排的方式是借用图书馆把相近分类放在一起的这种方式，但我反过来操作。我将看似不相干的书籍加以并置，例如在杜象的访谈旁边，我放了佛教研究的书。这个书柜邀请观众进入加威的艺术世界，透过书本的并置，观众将重新领略相异的系统的并存。换句话说，加威正在重新编织既